Welcome to Film Detour, a podcast where two longtime film buddies take you down and around the back alleys and side streets of cinema. With the occasional left-hand turn. I'm John Knappick. And I'm Bob Muller. So let's go. John, you ready? I'm ready. Let's hit it. Three the Hard Way, yep. uh, made in 1974. We have uh, Jim Brown. As Jimmy Late. We have... Fred the Hammer Williamson. Jagger Daniels. And then we have the, the kung fu artist, uh, tallest man in town, uh, Jim Kelly. My favorite name as Mr. Keys. Mr. Keys, And of there's a point in the film where he goes, my mama named me Mrs., so I would, people always give me respect. Best line. It's it's written by Eric Berkovici and uh, Jerry Ludwig, and, and these guys these guys were writing together for a real long time. They've been around a long time. Oh, they did uh, uh, television detective shows. They did uh, Mission Impossible, uh, Hawaii Five O. Eric Berkovici uh, actually did the screenplay for for Shogun, and he also wrote uh, the Culpepper Cattle Company. Really? Uh huh. And some and uh, Take a Hard Ride, which I've never seen. Have you ever said Take, take, take a Hard Ride? It's a spaghetti no. western, no. and uh, it's starring Jim Kelly. Fred the Hammer Williamson, uh, Jim Brown, and uh, some actor called Lee Van Cleef. Oh. Uh, direct, directed by Antonio Margheriti. Well, what's interesting about this film, given the the resume of those writers, is this feels like the most TVS because the plot is yes. just off the charts ridiculous. Uh, yes. <laughs> Gordon Parks Jr. actually, I believe, surpasses uh, his dear old dad yeah. in, in directing a movie that really had some resonance and punch. Yeah. Uh, certainly a better script than Shaft. But um, in, in this one, uh, Mr. Parks Jr. Uh, st- strictly was uh, making a paycheck. It seems this like time it. around. But I just oh two boy. more people involved in this film, yeah, which yeah. is very interesting. Yeah. Hal Needham. Hal Needham, sc- stunt, stunt director. director. Yes. And uh, Lucian Ballard is the cinematographer. Really? Wow. He's a, he went on to become a great cinematographer. I can't say that for this film. Yes, Hal Needham did 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 stunts for everything probably yeah. in the entire decade of the 70s. And he directed another great 70s film, Smokey and the Bandit. There you go. <laughs> you <know. laughs> Which is all stunts. I found the opening sequence... Uh, really, really interesting in a, a very funny way. What they have is they have this prison or compound or something. You can't quite tell what it is. It looks, it looks like Brubaker or something to me. I yeah, don't know. yeah, like from the South. Yeah. So That's I, what I thought it was. It's it's all black inmates and some right. female black inmates, which is kind of weird. And they, they started off, and this cop, who was the guard, rather, is behind this, this, this black guy who is walking around handing out food. And at one point inexplicably. He walks down the hall, turns his back to the guy, uh, the, the inmate, and, and, and starts talking down the hall to somebody else. Then this guy looks over and he sees this bunch of wooden crates over by the side. Because uh, they the just happen to be. Just happen to be there in the yeah. hallway. And then and then he, it's like some sort of Marcel Marceau mime, <laughs> he starts tippy-toeing. <laughs> Honest to God, tippy-toeing over. Tip, tip, tip. And he finds, what? A crowbar. In well, the look, hallway. Look, Bob, if the screenwriters are going to conveniently give you an opportunity where your guard walks down the hall and some boxes and a crowbar, that's what you do. I, I, I didn't realize this was a mime movie. I have to say, though, there's one very interesting thing about that yeah, scene yeah. is it opens up. It's like the opening of the movie. And there's these very interesting freeze frames. Freeze frames. But again, like Scorsese. Well, I would say, I would say, you know, Scorsese, sure, because he's freeze frames. But what it reminded me of was The Getaway. Yeah, it reminded me exactly. of Peck and Paw's Getaway. Well, you know why? Guess who was Sam Peck and Paw's cinematographer for that? Who? Lucian Ballard. Get out, really? And the Wild Bunch. Very good, John. You look at the Wild good Bunch. Point. Look at the Getaway. Both but same, same deal. Yeah, so yeah. he's like, I'm working on this. What is it? Seventy four. It's after those movies, I think. And he's slumming. He, he needs the paycheck. To work on this Look, film? Gordon Parks Jr. at that point was a name guy. No, this, this movie had a budget, definitely. Right. But for Lucien Ball, I'm thinking... He's like, I'm just going to use my old bag of tricks. I think everybody said, you know, I think Gordon Parks Jr. said, hey, look, we, 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 I'm getting a really good paycheck. Let's get some good guys in here. You need money, right? Everybody likes money. Let's just bring them right on in. So he, (laughs) so he, somehow he, he makes his way 
into this uh, this room. He's trying to escape with the crowbar. Yeah. He, he crowbars into this room and he finds all these guys lying there uh, and, and they're dead. I mean, all these, all these black guys are dead. Inmates just, laying, just lying there. really you know, horrifying Yeah, it scene. is. It is. Like, it, is. it is. And, and, and you're like, well, what are they doing? They're killing these guys, whatever. We still don't know exactly what they're doing. We don't know what, what it is. Yeah. So the guy is visibly shaken because he sees all these uh, the inmates lying there and he think he probably thinking to himself, it's, it's a good thing I'm getting out of here because this is going to be me next. Guard starts to check out, you know, do his rounds or whatever and comes in. So he hides underneath one of the sheets where all these other black guys are lying dead, um, which is probably not a very comfortable thing to do in the first place. So he pops out from the sheet, hits the guy and, 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 and takes off. He takes a couple of shots. He's hurting and uh, and he runs out. And, and gets as far away from him as he can. He tries to. He actually gets out of the prison itself. Yeah. He comes across this uh, couple, hippie couple, hippie couple that are laying on a blanket off the side of the road next to a barbed wire fence for this compound. Just it, it right. sounds like a romantic spot to me. I want to make it with my chick. This yeah. little opening here next yeah. to the concentration yeah, just pull, just, camp just, is just, very convenient. Just pull, <laughs> just pull off the side of the road. Go by the barbed wire. We got blankets. Sweat. Don't be. Don't. Honey, don't, you don't touch the wire. It's got three thousand volts. Exactly. By the way. Right. Seemed like a but very romantic park here. Very romantic spot. He had some wine, some cheese. It was. It was very, very beautiful. He comes out. The guy comes out and says, uh, "You got to help me." So they get in the car and then they bring him to. They bring him to Jim Brown. Right. He's he's dying in the backseat of the car. But before we actually get to Jim Brown, yeah. Sheila Frazier, very beautiful actress uh, from uh, Superfly. That's Superfly's girl. She was Superfly's girl. You know, obviously, you know, we uh, Mr. Parks Jr. knows knows a good thing when he sees it. He's and, got uh, his entourage of actors. Right, his entourage. So we got, you know, this inexplicable love song. Yeah. We, we had this this scene of horrible carnage, dead bodies all over the place, shootout, blood, hijacking a car, get me out of here thing. And then we go to this 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 luscious little soft focused opening credit sequence very 70s love making yeah yeah and and they're they're walking around jim brown and sheila frazier are walking around and they're they're kissy facing and they're drinking wine and they're going to expensive stores and whatnot and the and the and the love theme to three the hard way Wendy comes on the soundtrack uh, performed by the Impressions. Right. Well, what's interesting is like Jim Brown is this kind of like, he's almost like a James Bond character. He's right. got this like really nice suits. He's got this big, uh, what kind of car is that? Is that a uh, Rolls like Royce or something? Looks like an Eldorado to me. Eldorado? Looks like a Cadillac Eldorado. Okay. So, he, I mean, he's really, uh, he's, I guess, a successful music He's producer. a producer, right. And we, we have this gratuitous scene with the Impressions that has nothing, nothing to do with anything. And we have Charles, we have Charles McGregor. Charles McGregor. Well, Charles McGregor's initial guy in Superfly. Yeah. Uh, he's, Fre- he's, Freddy of Freddy's Dead. He's Freddy of yeah. Freddy's Dead. He was just out of prison. Uh, and I, I don't know for what, but he ends up being an actor in that film, and suddenly he's in this film. Obviously, too. buddies with Gordon Parks Jr. Yeah, and he's in a, he's in a bunch of films. Right. You can see him in a lot of stuff. Not exactly the best actor, but he looks like the toughest guy in the world. Yeah. But when he starts talking, he <laughs> kind of sounds like Mike Tyson. It's like this weird kind of all the street cred is thrown out the window right then and there. <laughs> he's and he like giggles a lot. Yeah, he does giggle like, a lot. He, he, he does. Gi- he does a lot he's of like, giggles. What is this guy? Yes. So that's an interesting scene in the studio. You got the impressions who right. used to, I guess, back Curtis Mayfield. Yeah, that was, that was that was the band. Um, yeah. And what what I thought was interesting is you had. Um, um, you have Jim Brown, like you said, sort of a James Bond, you know, character. Yeah. He's a he's he's a record producer by night and a gun toning action man by day. Well, that's the funny Sometimes thing about night. the plot. Yeah, though. it's like, <laughs> what is the plot? This this weird white supremacist group right. is developing some kind of serum, serum, you know, some sort of toxin to put into the water. It's a serum that mimics sickle cell anemia which obviously is predominant in black population. So the plot kicks off when the white supremacist, the guys who are running this compound, right. they kidnap Jim Brown's girlfriend. And then, again, they drop these action scenes uh, into this film. Jim Brown suddenly leaves his apartment. He's in the parking lot. Right. And suddenly there's these guys chasing him in a right. car. They're in the car. Right. He's on foot. Right. And I guess this is a chance to show off his his, his skill as an, as, an, as an athlete. Prowess. Yeah. So he's literally running away. He did a hell of a job. Car. I gotta say, he was jump. He he did his own stunts. Jumps over the cars, runs through the parking lot, jumps over some kind of a cable fence. You know, pretty impressive. And he and he gets up to the roof. And, and he the can cars outrun, chasing yeah, him. Yeah, he can outrun the cars, which is pretty good. He outruns the cars, but here's one of the worst edits in cinema. Somehow, at the top of the roof, there's there's two cars right. coming at him from. 90 degree angles right. like one straight at yeah. him one's coming from the left and then they cut 
to out, the outside of the building. And two cars in parallel right. go crashing through the roof. Because it always looks better in parallel. <laughs> it's like, we, not one car. We're going to have two cars and, fall off the roof of this garage the way, and explode. Why, why, it's right, an, look, I understand, why the car, I understand why the car explodes when it hits the ground, yeah. but I don't understand why the one car exploded before it left the roof. Before it left the roof. Right. So they, so we, so we now find out who kidnapped, who uh, kidnapped. Uh, Jim Brown's girlfriend, and we meet the evil white supremacist Monroe Feather, uh, played by Jay Robinson, who played Caligula in the robe. But he's got a great voice, very dramatic. I, I, I really felt sorry for him being in this movie because you know this is a classy actor. That's a classy movie, The Robe, and he, he's in Three the Hard Way. Playing this really bad white supremacist. Well, I don't know. I felt Bob. bad for him. I feel bad for him as an actor because he first he plays Caligula, one of the worst <laughs> well, you know, evil it, emperors. Wasn't exactly wasn't exactly the Bob Guccione and, version. And now of he gets another Caligula. role in Three the Hard Way. Yeah. And what is he? He's the guy who wants to wipe out the black population. He needed work. Jim Brown's girlfriend comes in. Her name's Wendy. Uh, uh, hence the theme song, Wendy. Wendy. She says, "Who the hell are you?" And and uh, and 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 Mr. Feather says, "My name is Monroe Feather." Now. I know what you're thinking. Light as a feather. Hmm. So, uh, <laughs> is he supposed to be some sort of foppish guy? I I don't really know. I don't really. They don't really make any sort of anything out of that. But <laughs> obviously, the writers wanted to because they called him Monroe Feather. So <laughs> I, I I don't I don't know. And then we go to Chicago because we got to meet the three characters. Of course. And so Jim Brown's Mr. L. A. Classic uh, music producer. Yeah. Uh, fancy dress right, man. Sure. And then we cut to Fred Williamson. Right. Fred the Hammer Williamson and, in and, Chicago. And, they have an interesting meeting when, when they meet uh, in, in, what is in, that? in the apartment. Well, uh, Jim Brown is waiting in the apartment, and yeah. Fred Williamson comes in. And I love Fred Williamson's acting style. It's, yeah. it's, it's all about kind of straightening his, his collar and his, and his shirt. And his, he pulls his pants up a lot. His big <laughs> collar. You got a big, big collar. Big, well, seventy. He's got to be a big collar. So <laughs> his big collar, a lot of, lot of like smoothing his skin. He does a lot of yeah. rubbing his, of his hands. Um, so he comes in. He, he rubs his hands a couple of times, straightens his collar, and he walks in and he turns his back. And all of a sudden, Jim Brown, I, I don't know, comes, literally comes out of nowhere. Exactly. <laughs> but here's the thing about the story: your girlfriend's kidnapped by white supremacists. You have to go get your buddy in Chicago to save and you're the race. And you Todd goofing around like and this. And you're goofing around. So when they, he explains what the situation is, they hit the streets and they're and they're on, on the, the subway platform above the, the L train. Come but hang them. on before yeah, you yeah. get there. But wait, because there's more. This is your, one of your favorite parts okay. about Superfly. Okay, yeah. Gordon Parks Jr.'s first film yeah. is they're walking on the street, yeah. busy street, yeah. and the dubbing again. Yeah. It sounds like they're talking from a closet. <laughs> and here they're on the subway I station. That. Yes. They're yes. on the street, yes. and it's like, Oh, I don't know. Oh, it's like, <laughs> you know, soundproof closet, and they're on the street. It's like the it's worst not exactly dubbing. echoing off the buildings, the concrete, I think the bricks. This is, uh, when do they, when do they call those things when directors, auteurs, have like their signatures? I think that's what <laughs> that, it could be. That's right. Signature. He likes a very controlled sound, like Hitchcock. <laughs> yeah. He likes a very studio controlled sound. So we, we, they, they get up the subway platform, and they have these two. Uh, Inconspicuous, shall we say? Yeah, couldn't be more conspicuous. Killers, henchmen in their uniforms, right. whatever. And they, so they go up. They, they they grab the one guy. He gets pushed off the subway platform. What the henchman? Yeah. And and the other guy takes off. Runs. He runs and runs and runs. And this is what killed me about that. Because when it comes to this white guy who is middle aged, being being chased really chased by Jim Brown, being chased by fullback Jim Brown and defensive back Fred the, the, Hammer, sorry, Williamson. Fred the Hammer Williamson, there, there's not a chance in hell that middle aged guy's getting away. Oh, and I have cool. to say, I have to say, it's not because they're black guys chasing a white guy. No, this no, no. is a, a no. gray haired middle-aged white right, guy right. running through Chicago. To, to, to two of the biggest football players And they there can't is. catch him. No, I, I wasn't trying to make a no, about being the black were. guy. I'm, I'm saying. saying the, but the these guy. two black guys who are football, professional football players, you know, a running back and a defensive you back, what? forget about yeah. it. I think it was the white leisure suit Jim Brown's wearing. He just could not <laughs> stretch in that thing. <laughs> but then this somehow... Not a chance in hell. Somehow this leads to the shootout in the arcade. It's a, which I have to say is another amazing scene. It's like this video game arcade, right. early 70s video game right. arcade. Right. And these guys suddenly appear, all these other henchmen, yeah. right? They pull up and there's this. They come out of nowhere. There's like a thousand of them, it seems like. Yeah. Just and, ready to shoot. But like Jim Brown has like this magic shotgun. <laughs> 
it's like I, he's got a shotgun and he shoots and like three guys fall. I like it when he shoots through one of the arcade game things, right? Yeah. And it goes through that, doesn't slow it down enough to really not kill the guy, just wipes him right out who's standing behind it. It's weird. Like there's guys falling left and right yeah. and it's just two guys with guns. Not a scratch on, on either yeah. one of those guys. And I, I love how they, the one guy goes running in, hides. Yeah. He hides in the photo booth curtain. They don't think to look in there. They didn't see him. <laughs> they didn't see him. You can see his legs he was out from under the yeah, curtain. Exactly. And they don't see him. And, exactly. and the funny thing is the guys, what are they, like killer Mormons? They're all dressed in the same <laughs> uniform, this like suit and whatever. But they, they completely destroy the arcade. They blow everybody up. And they don't have a scratch on them. In fact, in fact, they they, they couldn't look cleaner. Yeah, no not even broke a sweat. No rips, nothing. All right, so uh, so we go from the arcade, yeah. and then we, we go to a scene. We meet uh, the mad scientist who is producing. Oh, right. Who is producing this uh, serum. mysterious serum or toxin that that only can kill black people. It it it, it acts sort of like a sickle cell right. anemia type thing or gonna, something. Do we know what they're going to do with it? They're going to put it in the water. They're going to put it in the water. The water system. So uh, the white supremacist guy who who is in cahoots with who this Who thought guy. of this plot? I mean, think of that. We're going to well, wipe out the whole black population by putting a red serum that looks like uh, mouthwash yeah. into the water Lavorous, supply of- To be correct. I think it's Detroit and- So Washington, Detroit, and Los Angeles. Right. So- um, We're just going to start there, folks. Sure. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 it's like a small release movie. You want yeah. to just put it in some big cities. Right. So, you know, that makes sense. And then we then we go, uh, we expand. All, yeah. Right. Okay. So, all right. So we meet, we, we now meet the, the mad scientist. He's in a, he's in his laboratory yeah. with, with Feather, the white supremacist. And, um, and the, the evil white supremacist leader says, there are people who wouldn't understand. And the mad scientist says, genocide. The method of systematic extermination of a people. Well, that, that, I, I find that really hilarious because he says the word genocide, yeah. and then and then somebody must have thought, well, wait a second, the audience is not going to know what genocide what, means. What is genocide? I, I don't think we have a Webster's dictionary in the house. <laughs> so so rather than getting into that whole thing, the white supremacist guy says, there are people who wouldn't understand. Yes, most of the audience. <laughs> So I love how the mad scientist so, explains genocide, the method of systematic extermination of a people. And again, I have to say, what a casual just like idea for a script. Hey, we're going to kill millions upon millions of people. No, it's no. a good plot point because we can get these three guys together. To save <laughs> exactly. The day. And I have to say, uh, to be honest, uh, he wins the 1974 movie award for worst hair in a movie oh, ever. You can't have an evil scientist without a part down the middle of his head. <laughs> it's, it's, that is, without a doubt. <laughs> is that Professor Erwin Corey? You know, well, yeah, or, actually, no, who he, is that? He, he, he predates Professor Erwin Corey, uh, you know, by I think about four or five years. The actor is Richard Angarola as Dr. Fortrero. And he does a hell of a job. And 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 the um, the white supremacist uh, you know Caligula guy says uh, you know like how long will it take and and, and uh, the mad scientist says it'll take 72, 72 hours to work and the white supremacist leader says it took God seven days to create the world uh, six days actually he, he, he rested he got on, it wrong. rested on the seventh we can cleanse it. In just three. Well, ain't science good? Huh. We could do it in just three. Three days. Oh, my God. Um, That's a pretty evil guy, I have to say. So who's, like, next in line? Hitler? <laughs> I mean, you go Hitler, Monroe Feather, and then uh, Genghis Khan, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Idiot meme. John, it's your time. We're going back to New York City. Back to New York City. So the film the film is called, what is it called, Bob? Uh, three the Hard Way. And so far, we only have two guys who are, who are pretty hard in this movie. We need to see the third guy. So... Out of nowhere, we just cut to New York City. It's a nice little east side apartment building, I think. And this car drives up. Yeah. There, there are two, there are two plainclothes guys, and there are two uniforms. We got the four cops come out. Uh, uh, three of them are white, and one of them is black. Gordon Parks Jr. Was that Gordon Parks Jr.? That was Gordon Parks That's Jr. Pretty funny. That was his uh, Hitchcock moment. Uh, these guys are kind of running around like Keystone cops. It kind of looks like a Monty Python sketch when they get out of the car. And the one bad cop, uh, he goes into Jim, Jim Kelly's car uh, with this uh, with this briefcase, this mysterious briefcase, and he opens up the briefcase, but the briefcase has has really almost nothing in it. 
It has, it's got, it has two. It has two bags. Two little bags. Two little bags of, uh, of, of two little plastic bags of, of white powder and a really big bag of white powder. And and it, it's all placed on top of this kind of a, a like a bullseye crosshair thing yeah, yeah. that's screaming out to the audience, "Hey, look at this! This is important. Pay attention." He he takes the big bag of, uh, I guess, cocaine or whatever. I think and, it's coke or sticks, heroin. St- sticks it under Jim Kelly's thing. Gotcha. He closes the briefcase and they go about getting back into the car. Now, the question I have is this. If you're going to make a plant, yeah. you need a briefcase. You need four guys to do this. You need a big black sedan. You can have one guy walk up with a with a thing of coke in his pocket, yeah. slip it in the car, and walk exactly. away mysteriously. You yeah. have to have this big to do out of all this stuff. I mean, how many how, how many how many men does it take to screw in a light bulb? Jim comes out. It's a windy day, and it's clearly again we can't pick locations. We're just gonna do this right, right here. here. You know, uh, extras be you? damned. Whatever. I don't care if you're looking at the camera. Whatever. Yeah. They didn't lock down the street. He crosses the street and. Suddenly, Officer Joe Bolton walks up. <laughs> this this older Irish guy in a uniform. Right, right. Uh, Who has no idea how to hold a gun, by the way. Yeah. Not, a, not a clue. But what's funny about the scene is he pulls up. He uh, asks him what's in the car. He looks in the car. Obviously, he finds the plant, the drugs. And for a terrible movie, a great line, Jim Kelly going to set me up? <laughs> and he just starts wailing That's on this it. He guy. just starts kicking ass all over the place. And then the other cops pull up. Right. And, of course, this scene is just to introduce Jim Kelly and show off his karate skills. Right. So you got cops coming up in three different cars. He actually kicks Gordon Parks Jr. over the hood yeah, of that, the car. Yeah, that's actually one of the most dramatic scenes because yeah. I couldn't believe it. He kicks him over the the, 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 uh, guy got, the, the door of the car. Yeah. He goes flipping, flipping over, over the falls on the like. falls onto the hood of the yeah. yellow sedan. Gordon Parks Jr. was no fool. In the shot, yeah. visibly, you can see probably Hal Needham, <laughs> standing there crouched, <laughs> ready to catch him. <laughs> but my feeling is this. This black guy had it coming. Right. The white guys are either right. evil or, right. or, or stupid or yeah. doofuses. And, or would that be doofy? Was it plural? Doofy. Okay. So this guy has no business. This right. black guy has no business hanging one, out with right. these guys the one, whatsoever. Right. I mean, it's really funny that this scene is there just to show off his karate skills. But I just have to say, today's day and climate, would he have gotten one punch off without being shot 30 times by 10 Nobody cops? Nobody draws a gun. I love how the guy comes out like he's some sort of, you know, bare knuckle boxer. Yeah, he's going to box up a police officer yeah, in he uniform. He gets out of the car with his two fists ready to go. I just saw this guy kick five officers' asses with karate moves, <laughs> and I'm going to go box him out, even though I have a gun on my holster. If this was uh, 2018, Jim Kelly, there would have been no scene. He would have been dead within two seconds. So Jim anyway. Kelly is able to... Subdue, just just royally kick ass three carloads of cops. Yeah. Empty the carloads. He he kicks ass with every single one of them. They're all splayed out on the ground in the street. Uh, they're not moving an inch. Obviously, they're all knocked out. They're knocked out. Yeah, of course. One punch that's knocked it. out. One, one yeah. punch, one kick, they're done. But if you're like a kung fu master, that's So all of a sudden, come sauntering up the street, come... Uh, Fred, out of nowhere. Fred, yeah, out of nowhere. Fred, they just happen to know where he is at this moment. Fred the Hammer and uh, Jim Brown walk up uh, with all the cops uh, laying on the street. They greet Jim Kelly, uh, who points to the carnage like, uh, hey, my work is done. Yeah. And, <laughs> and they all just get in the car like, it's no like, big deal. Hey, this is real fun. And they're walking <laughs> down the street with these long maxi coats. Yeah. Again, it's like matching maxi coats. Yeah. And what's really great about the scene in the reverse shot... Yeah. The middle-aged white ladies yeah. behind the bushes just, yeah. like, looking on, yeah. like, are they extras? No, I don't think so. I think those are real people. Of course, of course. Going, what the hell is going on? This guy just beat up all these cops on our street. <laughs> Better call the police. And there's movie cameras. What's <laughs> happening here? I, 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 and I, I really don't think we need to point out every plot point because it's such a ridiculous movie, but there are just dropped-in amazing yeah. action well that scenes. particular like, that particular thing was that's good. great it's and then fun, the it's, car wash scene too yeah well that's the next scene the car yeah, wash scene the car wash and scene. I'm not gonna go on and on about the car wash scene well but, it's but, just an amazing shootout yeah, scene yeah, in a yeah, car yeah, wash yeah, for yeah. some reason yeah and and you know you have the, you have the, the goofy white henchman you know falling all over the place like yeah, Jerry yeah. Lewis coming out the car wash on top of getting soaking wet and whatnot and at one point they, this this guy shooting it up uh, 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 Jim Brown gets shot at one he point gets, he finally finally 
get shot. Finally, someone right. gets shot. So he gets he gets shot through through the glass, I guess, yeah. of the showroom or whatever. So you know, and 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 then Jim Kelly is is in the car wash, and and, and this guy's coming after him with a gun. So he grabs one of the other guys. Now Jim Jim Kelly's what six yeah. ten, not not counting the afro. He crouches down below this guy, uses a huge shield. shield. Yeah, and they, they, this this poor schmuck gets four shots done to him, and then Jim Kelly comes right. out and kicks this guy's ass. And the guy has like a, an assault rifle or something, yeah. and he's yeah. like, so here's this wild shootout in the car wash. Right. And Jim Kelly, right. the man he is, right. is just going to do his karate moves. Right, of course. Like, I don't need a gun. <laughs> I mean, this is funny thing about that time period. If you remember in the 70s, yeah. the other- I was big, there. The other big genre yeah. was karate movies. Sure. They were all over the place. Yeah. Like, you know, obviously Bruce Lee yeah. and, and Five Fingers of Death and- uh, Well, Jim Kelly's Enter, Enter the, the Dragon. Enter the Dragon, yeah. Jim Kelly. Right. So they had to throw this in there. Obviously, that's his skill. It's great. So the result of the car wash scene is the, the our three heroes kidnap one of the henchmen. Right. I love the fact that they're still using the ricochet sound from the old TV westerns. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's ricocheting off of those big brushes. That's it, the brushes. The soft brushes. Yeah, the, it, it, the old western ricochet sound. Yeah, love it. <laughs> so so the next the next action scene that comes in, we, we, we see three Kawasaki motorcyclists. Uh-huh. There's a red and a white and a blue. Yeah. And, and, they're, and they're making their way. I think uh, they're on the Brooklyn Bridge. Yes, they are. They're making their way across the Brooklyn Bridge. Well, there are three Kawasaki motorcycles. Three different red, colors. White, and blue. They're really slick red, looking. Red, white, and blue. Great. You cut to them on the West Side Highway. Right. And they're what, still and they're, clearly men. It's just a really cool montage. It's like, what is this yeah, like? Yeah, these yeah, Japanese. Where is this coming from? Yeah. Slick Japanese right. bikes, like riding all over New York right. City. And then all of a sudden they show up at, uh, the, apartment. at, at, at the apartment of, uh, of Fred the Hammer and, and Jim, Jim Kelly, who who have this guy captured in their apartment. The the motorcyclists come in, they take off their helmets, and there are three beautiful women. We have a, a black girl, we have an Asian girl, and we have a white girl with and long dark hair. And I will tell hair. you, the countess, yes. the empress, yes. and the princess. There you go. So, three dominatrix looking women. Right, so they're, they're, they, are, they are interrogators and torturers. Artists. Artists, <laughs> yes. Um, and, 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 and they have an interesting technique they start out the procedure with. The first thing they do when they confront this person they're going to interrogate, they remove their shirts. Yeah. Because well, why? Because when you're going to when you're going to you torture someone, get dirty, do you? you don't want to get dirty. You have to be topless. Don't want to get you don't want to get dirty. And you know you need flexibility. Yes. You need a lot of room if you're going to torture somebody. It's not about selling movie tickets. No, it's not at all. I think this is an artistic no. decision to have them take their shirt. But they have the leather pants on, which three, which kind of adds to Tops the, off. Yeah. You know, that's that's going to sell some tickets. Yeah. So, um... Uh, A multicultural dominatrix torture right. team. Wait, wait, it, it, was, it was equal opportunity across the board. I think it, it's one of the most brilliant plot points in the whole movie. <laughs> so what do they do? They take the guy upstairs to interrogate him. Right. Interrogate. They torture him to the point... Uh, we don't see that. We don't they, see it take they, place. They cut away from yes. it, but you hear this really intense Screams, screaming. You know, it's it's it, it's like Charles Lawton in uh, in, in and in, and in I have to say though, Souls. I do have to say though, they cut to the three women appearing on the balcony yeah. and they're sweating, sweating. They've, they've had a really Profusely. heavy workout, and you can only imagine if what happened to this guy. Right. And they're very fond of each other because the one woman just puts her arm around the other yeah. woman. And they just had a really good time. I mean, yeah. they, they seem like, we worked up a sweat, but we, we had a good time. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a, a day in in the life. Of a, and of a they, we get we go up there and the guy's, he's in underwear. Only his underpants. And he's he's all shriveled up in the yeah. corner crying like a baby. Fetal position, right. He doesn't have any scars on no. him, but I can't imagine. It's to me that's terrifying. I don't know what they did to him. <laughs> sure, the fact that you don't know what they did makes this terrifying. The that's guy's right. like a baby in the corner, crying and and they approach him. And... They approach him one more time to ask him something. He has a heart attack and dies. Perfect <laughs> end scene. And then we uh, then we go to um, Feather and the Mad Scientist. So then we go to this compound right. again. Right. And is that where all the people are gathering? Yes, but it, but first yeah. they they're, they're going to have their little powwow. The uh, the mad scientist uh, says to the white supremacist, um, uh, "Do you remember what you said to me when we first met?" And uh, Feather looks at him dreamily and says, "Yes, I remember." Now, is this a love scene? I wasn't <laughs> I wasn't really sure what was going on here. Um, but then Feather he thinks about it for a minute or two and says, "Yes, let's do it." You know, like you're going to go out and buy lunch. He's going to kill, you know, a couple yeah, of you know, millions, of t- tens of millions of people uh, doing this thing. And then and then they walk off together. 
and he puts his arm around the mad scientist. And uh, and and it, it reminded me of True. Humphrey Bogart and Claude Rains at the end yeah. of Casablanca. Yeah. Louis, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Uh, yeah, it's like <laughs> we have our plan. We're yeah, gonna... we got the plan. We're going to kill off a bunch of people. Let's, now let's go get lunch. It's a beautiful day. <laughs> it's a beautiful day. They're and walking They seem in the very park. close to each other. So yeah. I, I was uh, actually, I shed a tear. I was very, <laughs> very touched by that. And, and then we got uh, the next thing. We, we bring the action back. Jim Brown... Goes into a, a phone booth. Why? <laughs> and by the way, the phone booth is in the middle of nowhere. In the mi- he's does he get a call? He's told to meet here. Yeah. And Jim Brown, being the hip guy he is, is also the most gullible because he's going to show <laughs> up at a phone booth in the middle of the desert. Right. And then these two guys in this really big truck yeah. come barreling down at him, and and, and they're they're going to basically you know, you know, uh, smash the phone booth and crush right. him. Everything else. Into. Literally obliterates yeah. the phone booth Smash with him it. in it. With him in it. He somehow, in this Indiana Jones move, jumps out of the phone booth, does a backflip, and grabs onto the back of the truck. No, no. No, no, my friend. No, no. This is worse cut number two. The phone booth explodes, yeah. and they cut to the back of the truck. And he's on it. He's hanging. You no. never see him get there. No, I, 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 I'm sorry. I, I'm implying. I'm, I'm filling You're in implying. the blanks. It was just a film edit, right. and you for, filled for, it in. For the, That's the magic of film editing. The fo- <laughs> I did not want the people to think this is a great scene where the guy very, flips through the air. Very no. good point, John. But, I, I, but I, what I'm saying, he, yeah. well, he does this off camera is what so I was I, is what I was it, getting it at. It must have been yeah. in a flash. Yeah, because in a it's flash a off camera because suddenly he's on the back of the truck. Very much right of the story. Right? It's that whole scene. Uh, shortly after this, uh, Jim Brown takes care of business. He pulls the passenger and pulls him right out of the truck. And then uh, this guy shortly after meets his demise. Jim Brown jumps off the truck and he uh, he ex- the truck explodes. I, I think Again. Pretty, pretty much inexplicably. <laughs> Does it go off the side of the road? Well, it, it crashes into a billboard of some sort and explodes. What is with these cars? Is it just 70s cars just back I don't know. in they, the day? I, I think they just said, Hal Needham. Well, well, can you give us some good stunts and explode some cars? I, I think you're wrong. I think it's before Ralph Nader and back then cars just exploded. Oh, is that what it was? The yeah. pin- like if, the if it was a Pinto, I can understand. It was All a right. Pinto right. truck. Well, then, then I it just it. exploded because it hit the then side. I, then I understand perfectly All well. Right. I know we have we have two uh, kind of uh, inexplicable uh, flying scenes. You know, do you notice there's a lot, a lot of planes coming down in yeah. between? I, I swear to God, there's at least five scenes where planes are landing. Well, but I think they're all trying to go to the different areas. They're going yeah. to Los Angeles, Detroit, Washington DC. Yeah, but it's like they spend about a third of the film with. <laughs> With stock shots they of gotta, jets they landing, gotta, gotta fill this. this They're pretty good shots. They gotta fill this turkey out with something. I have right? to say, I mean, I felt like uh, it's all I saw were jets landing in this film. <laughs> uh, you know, it, we we got we got Charles McGregor making another cameo in this movie. He he's in several scenes. He he's in in the studio, and then he's in a couple of other scenes that uh, that don't go anywhere. He's kind of like the Peter Lorre. <laughs> You need like a sidekick, and then we go, we go to a, we have a half-assed, passionless, purposeless uh, Fred the Hammer Williamson uh, sex scene that that has that goes nowhere. That is not has no passion to it whatsoever. It's just an excuse to get Fred the Hammer in bed with a with a woman. It's like a groovy '70s sex yeah, scene. You gotta have it's, that. It's, it's, and we have another. We have one more one more throw in. This 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 film is full of padding. Yeah, Excuse well, me, it's film. I'm, I'm making it sound like it's Bergman. You got the detective guy, Alex Rocco. You know, Mo Green from The Godfather. Yeah. And, oh yeah, Mo great Green. Char- great Definitely. character actor. So you yeah. know, and, and he's in two scenes, uh, maybe two and a half scenes, and it, it's purposeless. It has no, it has no no meaning he's whatsoever. He's a friendly. He's supposed to be the cop looking for Wendy. Yeah. Who is not finding her, and Jim Brown's pissed off. Yeah. And but he has. But, he, Inexplicably, inexplicably, I can't say it. inexplicably in all these films. Yes. There's always like the friendly white cop. Yes. Why is that? I don't know. I, is that just like a Hollywood kind of maybe because n- not all white people are bad. Not all white people. <laughs> if you're gonna try and remove the black population, right? Uh, you, you gotta need have at least one, one friendly white. Well, there were guy. two. There were two. I, there I guess. Two. I guess. I guess. Alex Rocco, uh, Mo Green, the Godfather, uh, being the cop, and, and then we had we had the the Marcus Welby, um, yes. like doctor who patches gotcha. up patches um, up Jim Brown. Jim Brown. That's right. So we have that. two we nice don't white go guys. That scene. That's too, that's too <laughs> much. Now now we're going to basically this is this is the culmination. Yeah, we're going to the culmination now. This is the end action scene. Or this, sequence where they're going to try Detroit. and get, so they're going to find somehow, yeah, 
Needle in, the needle in a haystack. Needle in a haystack. Yeah. They'll find some out. The, the, the briefcases right. with the deadly serum. Well, they know they have to go where the water supply is. That's right? A good, all right. I think that's what it is. Good, good point. I think. Good, no, good point. So Jagger goes to Detroit. Mick? Mick Jagger <laughs> goes to Detroit to steal the serum. And then there's like some car chase with the Three Stooges and Red Berets. Yes. Yeah. Uh, did you, you have that no, one? I'm, I'm sorry. Like, I, I, I'm going. I'm going to. I, I like the Three Stooges and Red Berets, but there were more than them. That so I, 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 I've dubbed them the the Keystone Commandos. The Keystone <laughs> Commandos, and they all have machine guns. It's the most horrible uh, a day for night footage I've ever seen. Edward D. Wood Jr. has nothing on Gordon Parks Jr. when it comes to this scene. <laughs> it's the worst day for night scene I've ever seen in my life. I mean, there's some weird things in it. First of all, they all seem to have these old beat up cars. <laughs> And that's maybe because they need cars to blow up and they can't use of new cars. Of course, cheaper that but way. But they have old beat-up cars. You know, they got to they gotta pay a nice salary for Gordon Park Jr. <laughs> but they're like shooting at Jagger with these machine guns and yeah. they can't seem to hit him. And Jagger is who again? Because I'm, I'm thinking Mick Jagger. Jagger is Fred Williams. Fred, Fred Williams, right. Okay, Fred so. Williams. Next, we go to Washington Water Supply. And that's Mr. Keys and his dojo master. Yes. Who's like the poor man's Bruce Lee, I yes. guess, back then. Because yes, yes. he's kind of overweight. He was more like Jackie Chan. Yeah, he's kind of overweight. Yeah. He's got this half-ass dojo. Yeah. Jim Ke- yeah. Kelly recruits yeah. this guy yeah. to help him get the uh, serum for the, from the Washington Water Supply. Right. And they do this. They bring all these ropes and stuff. And, and I don't know what's going on to do the job. Commandos. And, and, you know, it's the, like, why not karate, just use the commandos. stairs? They climb up with the ropes. Why don't they just use the <laughs> there, stairs? There's a perfectly adequate stairway just, to, just across the way. It's just like they we, got in a little earlier than the Keystone Commandos. Maybe it would be a different story. I mean, it is the 70s. You kind of have to get give people what they came for. They yeah. bought the tickets. You All need right. some action scenes. So right. this scene's just thrown in there and they have this kind of like this fake... Hey, they had ropes and shaft. They want ropes and three hard way. <laughs> they have this fake Enter the Dragon scene right. Right? Right. Where, where Mr. Keys yeah. and the dojo guy yeah. get the, the... fake Jackie Chan. They get the serum from Washington and right. then... I love how Keys, there's 15 guys with machine guns, yeah. and he picks up a machine gun and he disdainfully throws it away because <laughs> he's going to kick ass with his hands and feet. Fre- Fred the Hammer Williamson outshoots three or five of the the, uh, the Keystone Commandos. They're shooting machine guns at him. They can't hit him to save their life. And he ends up with a, with a pistol defending himself. He shoots them all. And then he takes the, the deadly yeah. serum, walks up uh, from, yeah. the, from the ladder from Devlo, yeah. he straightens his collar, and then walks away. I, I, I think you have that, and then you have the shot in the other scene with Mr. Keystone, the gun away. I think this is like a subtle message about gun control. <laughs> it's like, you can have a machine gun, but you're still not going to kill me. That's right. Exactly It's right. just not going to work. No, forget So it. you can just forget the machine guns. Jim Brown, I thought, was rather impressive. Now we go to L.A. So Jim Brown, he fights off 11 Keystone Commandos with machine guns, with a shotgun and a pistol, while so, running straight at, at him, them. full out at them. No, just damn the torpedoes. And, and and what happens? They run away. So back up here. So now we're back in L.A. And Jim Brown's with his sidekick, right, right. McGregor, right. Charles McGregor. Yeah. And it's not at a water supply. It's like at this weird like gravel pits or yes. something. It's like rocks. And yeah. It's almost like guns in Navarone. Okay. Like there's these, these uh, rail cars going up yeah. the side yeah. Yeah. and they're going to have to get up to yeah. the top. So it's like they're throwing every movie, you know, cliche in right. there. This right. is the guns in Navarone yeah. scene. They're going to climb up. <laughs> Suddenly there's a shootout. Right. Jim Brown, again, yeah. he's got the magic weapons because he one shot and people just fall. I actually saw him shoot. I believe it was he was he had a shotgun. Yeah. He, he actually he hits two people. He yeah. knocks two people. He's back. running at him and he's shotgun pow and, but, and they fall. But they run away. <laughs> a whole bunch of them run away. Oh, I have to go back. Go ahead. So there's a scene when Washington and Keys is fighting him. Mm-hmm. Suddenly, four guys surround him mm-hmm. with machine guns. Right. And they decide to fight him. So you have, you're, it's, you have a machine gun. Jim Kelly kicks them all down. Yeah. He kicks them all down, and yeah. they don't even attempt to fire. No, because <laughs> it's a fair fight. I think, I'm going to fight this guy, this karate guy. It's fair. Let's, let me use my hands. They have the machine guns, but they don't even attempt to fire. If he's not going to use a gun, I'm not going to use a gun. That's how it goes. Okay, so Jim Brown in L.A. Yeah. Guns in Everone. Yeah. Okay, what happens there? He beats them. He gets the serum. Yes, they all get. They, they all get the serum. They all. They all get, get the, the serum. serum. Yes. And then we cut to the big celebration. The, the Nazi rally. Yeah, yeah. The the white supremacist rally, and um, <clears throat> literally, I have to say, with 
armbands. Yeah, they look like SS. With yeah, it's like lightning bolts, lightning bolts instead of the S's. Right. It's like the SS. So you, you got you got the, 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 the bad haired evil scientist guy and this this evil Pat Nixon look alike uh, on the podium gushing with admiration for for Feather giving this big ra- rollicking speech. They watch as their flag, you know, this SS type flag we yeah. just talked about, uh, with the lightning bolts on it, is 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 pulled up on this squeaky little pulley. <laughs> And the flag, it, it doesn't. It, yeah, exactly. It does. I swear to God. And then, and then, and then, it, it doesn't flap in the breeze with this heroic, you know, no. gesture. It it hangs there like a limp dick. <laughs> First of all, no one on this crew had some WD forty. <laughs> Spray the freaking pole. Get a piece of wire. Put it to the top. <laughs> Let the flag fly for God's sake. Have a guy with a fan off to the side. <laughs> Mole Richardson fan, you know what those cost? <laughs> Don't worry, we'll get the. We'll just wait for the win. Oh, we ran out of film. That's it. And I guess just we have leave to go the shot. It. Yeah. And the, and the white supremacist party music afterwards is some horrible electronic waltz thing with a drum machine. It's just, it's just too awful to be called Muzak. It's it's like the the old, the most uncool music ever. And they're digging it. Man, they're having a great party. And then we cut to the airport, yeah, right? With, with the with the TWA cargo plane, and off comes this powder blue, powder blue, powder blue van, packed with, van. Fire, packed with firearms, packed with firearms. And nobody checks. If fine, is it okay to just put that on a plane? Well, I, I think it's their plane. Or they just said we're buying a, a van from Chicago or something. Yeah, but don't but, look inside. Yeah, exactly. But don't they ever just check when you do it's, drive a drive well, a car? Well, this is back the, before the TSA, so you can I, I just. Suppose. It's just a van. It's okay. just a van. Don't check. Don't, it's just don't look a van. inside. Yeah. It's good. You know, I was actually quite happy with the scene because finally they're going to even up the odds. You know what? Let's not go after these 20 guys with machine with, with, guns with, with one, one pistol. pistol. Yeah. Let's get a truck full of yeah. weapons. Okay. I think that's a, a, let's even it up a little. And then I love it when Jimmy Late says to Mr. Keys, yeah. take a gun. He's finally had enough. <laughs> Dude, I know you know karate, but finally, come on. I, I like I like how, I like how for the for the end of the movie, Fred the Hammer Williamson has, has got he's got this thin you know uh, kind of like a like a clean Eastwood good, uh, you know yeah. little cigar thing. Never lights it. Yeah. Never lights it. You know it's it's kind of like his acting style with the with the you know, the collar and the rubbing the hands. Okay. He's got the cigar. Looks so tough. I know this scene's got a lot of stuff for each of us. We each are going to yeah. just jump in here. Okay, so yeah. now they're going to this rally, yeah. and you know something's going to happen. Of course, what right. happens? Mr. Keys has to take his shirt off. <laughs> you beat me to you, SOB, you beat me to it. Got it. Yeah, inexplicably, Jim Kelly takes off his shirt, which I like because, you know, he, he, I guess he wants to be able to move freely and do what, but he, take your shirt off, don't worry about it, just wear the rubber gloves. Safety first. Yes, of You can look cool, Absolutely. but you have to be safe. Yeah, yeah. You have to, OSHA rules, right? Yes, rubber Absolutely. gloves, please. Um, and then he does get rid of the gun. Yes. I'm telling you, he's like a little kid. <laughs> Dude, just use the gun. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. It's the amazing thing, uh, going back to Fred uh, the Hammer Williamson's acting style, is, you know, I'm making fun of his acting style. Yeah. But this guy, he, he made over 100 movies as yeah. an actor and, and directed over 20. They're, they're driving through this compound in this van, and they're just like, they got another magic gun, I guess, because yeah. it... You shoot it yeah. and things blow up. Of course. It's like the bomb gun yeah, or something. I, I like the bomb gun. And then they're flipping casually. There's yeah. these grenades yeah. and just flipping them over their shoulder yeah. and just like it's landing something. anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and it does because it, things it blow up. It doesn't just hit something. It is exactly what they want it to hit. So they drive through this compound. They just they just blow everything up. That's how you end the movie? Absolutely. It's like shit has to blow up. So they do all this stuff. Everybody dies off. You have um, You have the mad scientist comes to his demise. Oh, yeah. He, he, How's that? He bursts into flames. Oh, right. And you see him just, you know, you see him standing there, and all of a sudden the flames come up, and he goes running out. Now, obviously, this is a stunt guy with a big, thick suit, because you can yeah. see it throughout the flames, <laughs> and he's got the gloves, he's got the helmet on, the whole thing. It was pretty gruesome, though. He's crawling on the floor yes. at one yes. point, and he's burning. It, it's, thought... gruesome. it's gruesome in, in the respect, if you believe it's actually the mad scientist. <laughs> but when you know it's a guy, could be Hal Needham. I suspended, and, and, I suspended <laughs> my belief. All right, see, I, I edited frames where they shouldn't have been. <laughs> <laughs> when Jim Brown jumped over the back of the truck, yeah, and now and now you're, you're having empathy just for thought, a stuntman. <laughs> I guess if you're trying to kill a whole bunch of people to see him, you should die horribly. And and he got his just he, he got his just desserts absolutely yeah. positively. But what made me laugh about the end of the movie, 
the very end of the movie. Yeah. They they finish up. They they take care of business. Yeah. And they're standing there and they're talking about it. We got Wendy and we got Jim Kelly and we got Jim Brown and Fred the Ham Williamson. And finally they look, at, they look at each other and they go, "Now let's finish the job." And they go, "Yeah, okay." So what they do is they start blowing up everybody's car. Yeah. <laughs> I got to tell you, adding insult to injury, you know, yeah. you got to blow up their car on top of it. They're all dead, <laughs> but we're going to blow up the car. Blow up the car. That's it. Boom. Now the job is done. Finito. Right. So suddenly we cut to the credit sequence and what's going on? And there's something weird, right? What's happening? They all just go down the stairs and they all meet in that circle area. Okay. And they're just like having a good time. Having a good time. It's just like we just saved Ch- and millions of people, and, then and they we're just, so you know, casual. Jim Jim Brown, you know, finishes his date with uh, with Wendy. Yeah. A good day. You know how like now you see credit sequences and they have the joke reel, and yeah, yeah. this is just like they're just laughing it up. Yeah, having it's a like, great time. Yeah. Where's my paycheck? <laughs> Who are we saving tomorrow? It, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's but like, there is a sequel. There is a sequel. there is a sequel. Yes, really. Yes. What's it called? Uh, you can look that one up. One three plus one. And I'm sorry, I feel chipped. I'm telling you, what? five the hard way. Five, I know. What a jip. I'm telling you. I was you. waiting to see three guys kick ass. It's five the hard it's way. It's five. They, they, Chubby Little two, McGregor. <laughs> Chubby <laughs> McGregor. Chubby, Chubby McGregor. Charles McGregor. <laughs> and, uh, and fake Jackie Chan. <laughs> poor man Bruce Lee, as yes. you call him. Yes. Well, uh, Bruce Lee at least looked cool. He didn't have the coolest voice, but at least he looked cool. But this this guy had the hair kind of down. He had the hair. And, and Jackie, Jackie Chan, who is cool. I, I love Jackie yeah, Chan. But Jack in the Chan 70s, awesome. he had this long kind of hair. Yeah, that bowl cut. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's the bulk. The Mo Howard. Let's, let's not beat Howard around look. the book. The Mo Howard look. It's the Mo <laughs> Howard in a kung fu suit look. <laughs> and there you have it for this week. There you go. Well, that's all the time we have this week. We'd like to thank our friend Glenn Ornowitz for his music. And of course, our listeners for tuning in. So join us next week for another episode of Film Detour. If you like our show, please recommend us to your friends. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Play, and leave a review. Go to our website at filmdetour.libsyn.com to leave comments or email us with questions. That's filmdetour.libsyn.com. You can also visit us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can also find us on YouTube.